Hi everyone. I don't like my videos super long so this will probably be a part two from uh, the previous video and what I want to do is compare the waterways of today's Arizona to a map of Mexico from 1850 which includes uh, Arizona and California and here's the map in its entirety and what I want to do is zoom in and uh, first I want to look at California. California the island has is filled in at this stage of the game and just I want to point out a couple things there's a great sandy flats uh, which is like today the Great Basin where this could fill with water and this potentially could fill with seawater at different stages if there's an inlet for this uh, in this map the uh, California Island channel is filled in on the upper left is San Francisco and the whole Sacramento Valley and the whole you know a big portion of the length of California looks like a, a swamp land where the valley is okay and I've got a couple few dots on here the bottom purple dot is where the uh, uh, the water enters into the Gulf of California and going up a notch is uh, where the Hoover Dam is today so there's been some serious land changes and going up a notch is uh, pretty close to where the Utah border would be um, the rivers have changed dramatically and uh, the Colorado River is um, essentially the green line and it, um, I'll start from downstream it goes up to where the Hoover Dam is and switches over and this landmark that where the green dotted is is where it had the uh, sulfurous uh, pyramids I mean what a strange landmark that's honest to God that's what it says okay from there a new river formed the little Colorado that runs northwest into the Colorado and then the headwaters go on up into Colorado so the whole nature of it all changed uh, the white dotted lines are rivers that no longer exist and um, on the bottom right um, there was no salt river on this map I drew it in and uh, swinging up uh, to the north running south is the Verde River and that was also not on the map now this is 1850 so something else happened I'm gonna look into it I think at this stage of the game there's already been catastrophes to hit Arizona and I am gonna say just you know this is my theory my opinion you can have your own you know but this is what it looks like to me that Arizona has already flooded at this stage of the game and um, just that you know Phoenix is already in ruins there's not showing the population and um, you know in a certain sense I'm getting ahead of myself because the Salt River is not on the map and one of the reasons I think there was more than one disaster is that um, you know the Salt River formed somewhere after 1850 okay this is recent past this is what the map is showing I can't make this stuff up so there's a picture of the Salt River Canyon this is the headwaters that heads into Phoenix and you could see it on the map here um, you know I, I should have marked it I apologize but it runs diagonally from uh, the bottom left hand corner of the map and um, 
Okay, from there, um, okay, everything is marked out here. Uh, what, it's not showing up super clear, um, but it looks to me like there's been major geographic changes and below the Verde River, a little to the right, it has M rim and that would be the Muggian rim. On the left hand side of it, it it's not, it doesn't extend that long today, but it extends further on the right. And I am going to theorize that this, so much water came over this land that it was like a waterfall. And this is the transition zone, you know, what I was just talking about. It's called the Muggian Rim. And um, also, geologically, I'd like to talk about the St. George, Utah area. And there is the hurricane fault line. And I think at some point this gave way um, of the Great Basin dumping seawater all over Arizona. Now this is what St. George, Utah looks like. It's a gnarly mess and northern Utah is where you get all those crazy beautiful wild uh, rock formations that look like sculpted and wind swept. I'm going to say water swept. Um, and this is uh, the in the St. George area where I just showed you the picture and this is like a triple junction. Um, first we have the Colorado Plateau that sits all over the um, Four Corners area. We have the Colorado Plateau, the Great Basin, and the Mojave Desert. And this is from a, a backroadwest.com who has a YouTube channel. This is very informative. Have a watch because I learned quite a bit about how even today this rainwater collects and does not go to the sea. Um, so there is a great big potential that there was seawater dumped all over Arizona. It's speculative, of course, but it, it ex could explain a lot. Okay, and he, on this map, back to my homemade map, or writing on it, we have the Hurricane Fault, and this is how the water might have flown. Um, the Rio Grande is on the map to the far right, and it, it is really possible that um, that water could have traveled east and then went south and created the Salt River. It is all op open for speculation, but there's, um, I just have a number of reasons to think there was more than one catastrophe in Arizona. And one of them um, I want to talk about is these orange stars, if you will. These are, you know, just a very basic landmarks of where there are cliff dwellings. And the further up you get into Colorado, they're just crispy, clean, and beautiful. And the ones down in uh, New Mexico, the bottom right hand corner of the map, are, you know, in pretty decent shape. Um, if you move up where it says the Salt River, those are, that's the Sierra Ancha wilderness area in Arizona and they are high and scary looking. I mean, what kind of people, who in their right mind could live at the edge of a cliff? I mean, just the logistics of food, water, and children is just like, uh, could blow the mind. Okay, and then up, uh, more centrally located that orange, now, and this will kind of um, um, validate my flood 
theory is that these ruins, I'll show you a couple pictures, are absolutely chewed up and mineralized. It's like these people couldn't reach high enough ground. Um, and there's more other pristine type ruins here and there, you know, you know, uh, the, um, but something remarkable that makes me think there's more than one event is um, uh, the star where it says Little Colorado. Now that's Canyon de Chez, and they just have openings to cliff dwellings, you know, way over your head, you know, what, 50 feet, I'm going to guess, or higher. Uh, in there's different areas, they call it the quote ladder ruins. Um, you know, access to them. There's ruins in the Grand Canyon, they're feet and feet and feet off the ground. I don't know how you would get up and down. So, that is a part of my theory that, um, uh, you know, cliff dwellings are really an unusual event worldwide when you look up that term there you know you might find one in china and one in south america um but mostly they're you know what they call cliff dwellings are buried buildings you know you could see it but these are you know i mean they could be buried buildings to a degree but this is an area of the world i mean this is so unique you know, to have so many of them, and it's more than a, in my opinion, a cultural liking to live in a high place. Also, on um, I marked off, I had made a video about Kate Cloud and the Eagle Rock and the Bones, and um, real quick, I think that was a real sculptor. I think it was... Uh, got wasted in this type of flood and when you look in the background behind this young man I mean they look like toppled structures and then piles of stuff that got mowed down you know and here's looking in another direction and I think this these bony structures the way there were so many down trees is also an area that got uh, really um, wiped out with water. Okay, and back to my map. Um, what I want to point out to you is, is just with a couple of pictures, um, um, the further you away you get from the Verde Valley, that muggy and rim, the more pristine the ruins are. I mean, it looks like they've been here more than, I mean, like they've been lived in more than once, like they had structures, wood got toppled on it, and everything petrified, and then re-inhabited. That's my opinion. I, you know, I'm not an authority on any of this. You know, I'm trying to make sense of a, uh, the world I live in. Okay, and then... Um, in this transition zone, uh, the Muggy and Rim area, this is where these ruins are absolutely chewed up and it looks very water damaged to me. And you find things like corn cobs, okay? How, how long can a corn cob last? You know, quite a while, but really, in another issue that I don't think it's a kajillion years old is that these, um, it's not just the wood intact, it's the thatch. And, you know, here's a witness to it. Um, I think the first one might be in the Sierra Anches, I'm not sure. This one is in the Sedona, Arizona area. And um, one thing I need to bring up, you know, this is 1850. The rivers are still not in place. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I want to look into, we'll see how far I could get with it, is but in 1912, they had land reclamation with Roosevelt in that in 1912. And this is when they 
you know, we're building dams, like the Hoover Dam, the Roosevelt Dam, at least the original ones, I think they are built on a much larger scale now. But, I, you know, recl land reclamation, reclaiming it? From who? Uh, what I'm getting at, I don't know if, you know, if this is at the point where they re-diverted the uh, Colorado River to run where it is now, where the Hoover Dam is, I don't know. You know, instead of this sulfurous pyramid um, area, yikes. Um, so I'm going to look further into the um, land reclamation of 1912 and see if they were monkeying with the water at that time, if that makes sense. So, okay, until next time, have